This thing right here, the map, it truly is a great advent, isn't it? It's been able to help us find our way in so many great titles, particularly in the genre that skyrocketed in popularity by all game developers since the resounding success of GTA San Andreas. Since then, many companies have built their names making off this very genre, but sometimes less is more. I'm talking about linear games, where the very cool advent of the map is a tool that you don't need or rather can't rely on. This video will break down what makes linear titles so special. So today we're talking about single player games as the online multiplayer experience definitely provides a different type of take and these factors affect those type of games quite differently. So before we even go deeper into this entire topic, let's define what open world games are and what linear games are in comparison to each other. Open world games are titles that give the player complete freedom. What to do and where to go in the construct of the game map. The world is usually the backdrop or the canvas for the main campaign. As you try to complete the story, you'll visit the main locations in the map. Along the way, there'll be random encounters, outposts, and side missions you can participate in that are spread all over the entire map. Varying, of course, on quality depending on the game that you're, uh, that you're playing. This allows for freedom to do whatever you want in a cool fictional world, made very popular by San Andreas, of course, released way back in 2004. Since then, the open world genre has become more and more popular. Now, gents, I'd be lying to you if I said that I don't enjoy an open world game from time to time. They're great titles and there are so many, many classics that I enjoy from that very genre. I especially feel this way for RPGs due to the intricacies of those games. So much more can be done in that world. There is simply more depth that can be achieved. This brings me to the very topic of today's video. Why are linear games so much better? What's so special about them? So let's continue with the definitions of these two types of games. Unlike open world games, linear games are much more like a roller coaster experience. You can't go anywhere you want in most cases. You have to more so follow a specific path set by the game developers. Depending on the game, there will be other paths or secrets to find along your journey. It's a much more rigid experience objectively. So from what I'm saying, you may think that it seems that linear games are simply an inferior version of video games, a prehistoric kind that we used to delve into before we had the option to go into the open world genre. The open world is more a natural evolution of the linear game that was the foundation of the gaming industry. I beg to differ. Linear games are simply a different genre and gaming style altogether. While there are definitely pros to having a free-flowing world to explore, a linear title is also able to create a better and more memorable experience most of the time. Don't understand? Let's kind of explain it in some sort of a diagram or figure type of example. An open world game. An open world game would be more so something like some sort of shadowy figure. A figure big where it's rounded, circular, square. That is the open world map that you operate in. And in that open world map, there are dots everywhere spread around the entire map. Those dots are the missions, the main missions you'll be doing, the side activities, the interactions, all the things that you can do without that entire map. And depending on the game, whether you're doing the main missions or side missions, you can do those things at any point in the story if that section of the map is unlocked to you. But let's be honest, if we're talking about the general open world games we have at our disposal today, there aren't that many dots that are actually worth going to or worth visiting. There are plenty of fodder, useless activities that you're probably not even going to interact with in the entire game. So those dots are a lot less than you'd actually want them to be. Now, a linear title is a different type of beast. It's not this bigger sphere that you visit. It's more so like a line or a tree. It can be these two type of figures. Let me explain. The games such as Uncharted, 
you don't have the option to go anywhere you want in the story or go to any location. It's more like one straight line going in one direction and throughout that line, the little crevices that you can visit throughout as you continue through the story. And in those little crevices at the dead end, you'll possibly find a skin or some sort of secret that will give you a little bit better things uh, into the experience that will uh, some, somewhat enhance the experience there. But Uncharted doesn't have a level system, so it's a little bit different there. But I'd say a linear experience that I kind of prefer a bit more than this, and I'd say the best way, the best way is the way that games such as God of War implemented, and ways such as Dark Souls implement these sorts of systems. In these systems, it's more so like a tree that branches out, that has many branches in which you can explore at your will. It kind of does give you that little bit of a feel of the open world experience, but it is still fundamentally a linear title. That's what's so special about these type of games. So in Dark Souls, you usually have one center point, right? You've got that center point, whether it's Majula, whether it's Filing Shrine, wherever it is, you have that one central point. And throughout that central point, there are multiple branches you can go out into throughout your entire journey. That's the special part about it, and you can choose where to go. Some areas are harder than others, depending on the game that you're playing, but usually they're about the same level. And as you continue through those branches, you'll reach boom. You'll reach a dead end at that dead end. And then you have to go back to the central point or backtrack to an area that has now been unlocked to you because you've gained a key. And now another branch has been opened. And another branch, another branch, and another branch. As you continue through that linear experience, more and more branches are opened up to you and the game flows and is opened up as you continue to make significant progress. A really cool and interesting linear experience. And there are many benefits to having such a game. So at this point, you may be confused. What am I talking about? What are these benefits? And how does an open world game and linear differ from each other? What are the significant factors? Let's start with the first thing we talked about in this video, the map. But it's a little bit more complex than that. Having a map in the game significantly alters the way in which a player will interact with the game, namely exploration. If you were to go to your run of the mill open world game, if you would glance over to the map, you'll be flooded with information, whether it's a side mission or an activity that gives you XP or even a main story tale. Some games have even tried to mitigate this by making areas you have yet to explore gray. Regardless, the map is something that you fully rely on, especially when the GPS and waypoint system completely leads you to the next story mission. Even places that you've yet to discover, usually the game will take you where you need to go. The map is just too big and there's no way you'd find that location without such a system. Now this sort of system works, but you definitely miss a significant part that linear games really excel in. Let's go to a linear game that really shows how much the open world genre falters. I just recently finished Sekiro Shadows Die twice. The game is great for many, many reasons. Great combat, a solid story, but what makes this such a special title for me is its exploration. I know Ashina like the back of my hand. I know almost every single nook and cranny of the map. The various paths I can take and which shortcuts work and don't work depending on how far I am into the game. Linear titles removing the map forces players to find their own way forward. Not only does this make the game a lot more engaging for the player experience, but it makes exploration in places you find more memorable. You can drop, you can drop me, me anywhere in Sekiro, drop me anywhere in Sekiro and I without a doubt will find my way forward. That's how it shows that that game truly has great game design. Another game that does this really well is Max Payne 3. From Rockstar, a company not known for developing or publishing linear titles, Max Payne 3 is a masterpiece that I'm sure many of you have missed over the years. It's, it's a game I'd genuinely consider a 9 out of 10 that I'd recommend all of you play. There is no map in Max Payne 3 either. Using the same engine used for GTA 5, they were able to craft a beautiful world that is reactive and compelling to your combat experience. I remember those maps pretty well, 
making my way through finding the upgrades and painkillers are definitely highlights of the game considering the comments that Max makes when he pops one of those things. He continuously makes excuses for him to keep his addiction going. Every single area is much more memorable in comparison as you struggle to defeat your enemies trying to reach the next checkpoint. Earlier in the video I said that open world games tend to just be backdrops for the campaigns. In most cases, if you aren't doing a mission, the game is kind of boring. The journey is no longer a worthwhile part of the experience. Brings me, this brings me to my next point. Quantity over quality. In this day and age, unfortunately, a groundbreaking title is how big can you make your open world game? These are common things used in marketing. The biggest open world game you've ever seen. Unfortunately, that comes at a cost. And if you're a gamer, you'll realize that that cost in most cases is just simply too great. Let's go to a game that I think encapsulates this problem perfectly. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Many reviewers have given this title reigning endorsements. But when I finally got to playing, I was significantly disappointed. This is by far the biggest open world map I've ever played in. What should have been a cool factor became one of my biggest frustrations with the game. Number one, it took forever to go from point A to point B, whether you're on a ship, you're on a horseback, whatever form of travel you're using, it's a boring experience to get where you need to go. Number two, extremely boring traversal. Dude, like getting on a horse and trying to get to where you wanna go, there, there wasn't any sort of innovation or things that they did to try and make the traveling from one place to another interesting even remotely. And then point number three, copy paste content. Wherever you go in the entire map, you've seen it before, whether it's an activity, a side quest, a bounty, Whatever it is, copy paste content is all over. You will see that very same building on 20 different islands throughout all of Greece in your very first playthrough. What this clearly shows to me is that size matters. Linear games are better in all these regards because they are so much smaller. Because of this, every place you go to is well crafted, a tailor-made experience to improve the overall game. There is little to no copy-paste content and environments that you'll be able to notice. I would much rather explore an unknown area in Dark Souls than complete another generic outpost in Far Cry. You have nothing to rely on, no map, no companion, all you have is your wits and environmental cues that you may miss as well. It sometimes definitely does depend on luck. You will likely never get lost in an open world game. The hand holding is strong with these titles. That handicaps you as you'll have much less of an attachment to the world in most cases. As I said, I, just, I don't hate these games at all. I actually enjoy open world games and there are a number that I view as classics. But the main point I want to make clear is that too much depth is usually lost in these games. Why does the ocean as deep as a puddle is the saying that we usually use to describe open world games in the genre in most cases. GTA 5 and a few others are a few exceptions because those games are more so carried by a strong narrative experience. The other game mechanics slightly take a back seat. Los Santos and these type of maps tend to be backdrops for the campaign. What about games that aren't very strong in terms of writing and in terms of the plot? It's much more important that your systems are high quality and ensure that they give you a unique experience. What I'll say to you is that there is no way that you're still having a blast. Let's say you're playing Far Cry 5 and you're doing your 6th or 7th outpost and you're telling me you're still having a great time. Come on bro, come on bro. Even if you use different companions, even if you use a different approach, by that point in the, in the story, it has gotten pretty dry, let's be honest. This formulaic game development style is ruining the medium in many ways. And the main culprit is of course uh, Ubisoft. Linear titles such as Uncharted are able to give you a spectacular experience that you won't forget anytime soon. Parkouring over a crumbling building is tension filled for the very first time, the definition of a roller coaster experience. Some may complain about the rigidity of the linear genre, but I would personally rather have a high quality experience in one way than have multiple poor ways to skin a cat. And to be honest bro, dude, 
the player choice that you're given in these titles is usually on the try side. How are you going to take this outpost this time? Are you going to shoot the alarm or are you going to go in guns blazing? Not really great player choice. The only games where you really have high quality player choice are RPGs. Let's be honest. So, in conclusion, why are linear games better? All encompassing. Point number one, superior exploration. The game forces you to learn the world without a map. Two, higher quality areas due to smaller scale. Three, a better quality and unique experience as the game is shorter and smaller. In most cases, open world games are your typical fast food joint. A McDonald's has a whole lot of food and you'll definitely get value for money. But um, if you've recently had McDonald's, it's definitely not going to blow you away. Linear games are more so like a gourmet dinner from a famous or prestigious restaurant. Tailor made for your mature gaming palette, an experience you will not soon forget. The portion may indeed be smaller, but what you had was definitely scrumptious. So guys, those are my thoughts. I, I definitely still do enjoy open world games, but unfortunately too many of them are mediocre and uninspired. Completely uninspired. You used to be cash cows more than anything else. Linear titles are experiences that are handcrafted to blow you away at least a few times. So let me know your thoughts guys. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know down in the comments. I will be down there and let's have a dialogue. Let's have a discussion. Take it easy gents.